as you can see, there's not much grip. But my word, when you do finally get some grip and you put all of that power through the rear wheels on this Cayman GT4, does it come alive? Wow. conditions to be taking out such a pure thoroughbred track car out on these British B roads it just really is a recipe for disaster but I've been very fortunate or unfortunate because they say that what you don't know you don't miss and whilst I've always lusted for the Cayman GT4 and I've always wanted one ever since I've seen it come out I've never really experienced it enough to really kind of say right that solidified my need to have one of these cars until Porsche GB were very kind to give me this for a few days to experience and I've been driving it a lot and the more I drive it the more I understand it I understand its purpose I understand its quirks I learn just how good it is and just how deadly it is my word this is so sketchy in this weather enough to turn it off because this is a 94,000 pounds car and I do not want to stack it. The moment you get this car in the higher end of the RPM it sings, it really does reward you and that's what the Cayman GT4 is about. It wants to be kept above four and a half thousand. traction but I'm sure in the summer with the Cup 2s this thing will provide endless amount of grip. Now why will I not buy one of these things just yet? As much as I'm desperate, I am desperate to own one of these cars. Now the main reason really is I've got to a point in my life where I'm trying to be a little bit sensible. Trying. I do think trying to be sensible is the key word here because how can you how can you be sensible when you've got something that looks this good which is within the grasp of your own hand as in literally I could go and buy one of these now not specifically the 718 Cayman GT4 because that's still a little bit out of my price point this here is £94,000 and well I could probably afford it but I just don't want to do that There's literally ice all over this car. But no, the one that I would effectively go and buy would be the, uh, the 981 Cayman GT4. Now, if you think of price point, the 918 Cayman GT4 at the moment, they're hovering around the 60,000 mark. I don't necessarily think they're gonna drop much further than that. They might drop into the, the high 50s, but for them to really start tanking, I don't think that's gonna happen. 
And the reason I don't think that's going to happen is because the 981 came in GT4. Not only does it sound better than the 718, but there's also, I guess, the demand for them is going to be higher than there is on these. Now, the reason I say that is Porsche GT product allocation has always been something, a bone of contention, which is also why the demand and prices for these cars stay so high. Now, when the 981 came out, there was a bit of, I guess there was a few years worth of run rate before the Porsche unveiled this. Uh, the 718 came in GT4 and allocation for the 71 GT4, whilst it's a lot harder to get yourself a new one, it's also much easier. And the reason it's going to be much easier is because the product life cycle of the 718 GT4 is going to be much longer than that of the 981. And the reason for that is that we believe that Porsche are going to bring the next GT4 or next Cayman will more than likely be hybrid or electric. Also, Porsche have released the PDK version of this car, which apparently the demand for it is super high. Now, what that could mean is that these ones here, the manual 718s, could drop in value and kind of fall in on par with the uh, 981 GT4, but the likelihood of that happening anytime soon is, is pretty low. Now, yes, the Cayman 718 GT4 has the larger engine, it's bought out to a four litre. Yes, it has more power, but equally, the 981 GT4 is just as much of a car as this. Now, it's a bit rich of me to say that because I haven't driven the 981, but I have seen a number of people compare the two, and actually, a number of people say they prefer the 981 over the 718. But now it comes to why I can afford this and why I won't do it just yet. i figured it out now. You have to kind of put your bum in, turn it, and then you're golden. But I did say in my review that these seats are quite hard to get used to, and actually, I will say that again. I think if I was to buy one of these, I'd probably spec, I'd probably get it with the standard seats just because as a YouTuber, I get in and out of cars often and I don't want to end up breaking my back. Although these seats would be epic for something like the Nürburgring. But the reason that I wouldn't buy one right now is plain and simply is that I've got my uh, adult hat on. Now, for those of you who are new, you're probably thinking, oh God, why did I watch this video? But Hear me out, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of sense because this may help a couple of people uh, who are potentially thinking of buying above their means uh, because they want to either impress other people or show off or just have something that they can't necessarily afford. Um, they tend, if you, from a financial perspective and, and a, a financial advisor perspective, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, so please take everything that I say as, I guess, information or entertainment purposes only um I, i'm not here to help plan your finances but what i have learned over the last year or two um is that you need to start thinking about your future and every person's situation is different mine is different to yours but me going out to buy a cayman 981 gt4 at the age that i am whilst i could easily do it will then seriously restrict my ability to save money or invest money and over the last year, I've been investing pretty heavily in uh, the stock market. Uh, as most of you know, who have been involved in my channel, you know that I invested big in Tesla um, just over a year ago, uh, and it's paid, paid back significantly well. Uh, I bought my Abarth 124 Spider cash as a result of that, and that was a really difficult decision because I was so close to buying a Cayman GT4. Now, in terms of kind of what they say in terms of financing a car over what you earn from a salary perspective, they tend to say that your finance payment should be roughly 10% or a maximum of 10% of what your monthly take home is. So if you took home three grand a month, you ideally don't want to be paying more than 300 pound a month. And that is obviously if you want to build wealth. Now, everyone's situation is going to be slightly different. Now, for me, I look at the situation, actually buying the 981 Cayman GT4 would really push me over that 10% barrier. Um, and even with a huge deposit, I'd still probably pay more than what I take home each month. Now, that's not to say that I'm not going to buy a Cayman GT4. I just would rather save up some more money, get a more chunky deposit so that my monthlies on the car would be far less than if I just got excited and did it now. I've also got a pretty hefty mortgage as well, guys. So um, as, as you guys know, if you're subscribed to the channel, you know that I've recently purchased a house uh, and that mortgage needs to pay itself down because ideally, if I don't overpay on the mortgage, then I'm going to be paying that thing off until well I'm probably 65 and I don't want to work until I'm 65 I'd love to be in a position to retire a little bit earlier than that and in order to do that you need to build wealth so what am I invested in well, first of all let's get moving but I tell you what it is extremely difficult to not want to buy this car to not 
not want to buy one of these cars. But I'm sure that people watching this video will be able to relate. Now, yes, as a YouTuber, I should be the person that says, yeah, spend all your money, buy the most amazing car because that's life and you only live once, YOLO. But unfortunately, I'm a YouTuber that is a very normal person like everybody else. I'm not made of money, so the decisions that I do make with money have to be, I guess, quite wise. It's fighting for traction with these Cup 2s. And actually, there is a lot of black ice on the road, so we really need to be careful. As much as this car rewards you for bouncing it off the limiter, we do need to be extremely careful. Sliding everywhere. So, what kind of things am I invested in? So, to put it bluntly, uh, I might put my, my holdings effectively at the moment are, um, a seven, effectively 75% of my uh, investments are in Tesla. Naturally, I have my uh, private pension that I contribute to. And then the rest of my holdings are um, in cryptocurrency, specifically Ethereum and very soon to be Bitcoin. Um, I missed the massive Bitcoin run up, uh, which is fine. You know, you can't win them all, but I caught the massive uh, Tesla run up. But now I think I'm going to start dabbling a little bit of Bitcoin. So not a massive position, just a position to be able to kind of hold for the long term and effectively grow wealth in the long term. Now, I'm not going to be invested in Bitcoin, um, Ethereum or Tesla as a short term play. Um, the idea is to hold it for, you know, at least at least a few years and then whatever happens then we'll see um, but in terms of when I'll buy a Cayman GT4 the reality is I'm gonna keep the ABAR because it doesn't owe me anything it's paid off its cash it's great I'll keep that for at least at least another year and then I'll have a decision to make whether or not I continue to keep it or have I made enough wealth to be able to buy a Cayman GT4 with low monthlies but anyway guys, if you haven't already, please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. My name's is Steph, you guys have been awesome. I'll see you all very soon on the next video. Take care, bye bye.